Hi everybody! This week I'm excited to talk to you about the word encounter and I encountered this word because one of my students brought it up and this brought up so many great moments of study that I thought I would share with you. When we first keep wanting to say encounter, that's going to happen a lot. When we first looked at the word, we hypothesized how it would be built. The student was real quick to want to pull off the E-N and also wanted to divide C-O-U-N-T from E-R. And that would have been what I would have done as well. Except in preparation for this study time, I had already looked at Edom online and noticed that there's multiple counters. And of course, you've got a countertop, like the counter you might lay things on, and then you can counter somebody, go against them. But I think sometimes when we're studying words with students, it can be hard to think of these different definitions. It's really important and helpful to rely on resources and references and then not make assumptions. So encounter actually doesn't have a base, C-O-U-N-T. Count, like to count numbers, is related to compute. And so that is coming from a different Latin verb. It also traveled through French before coming into English, which is very, very common whenever we have vowel digraphs like an OU. Those two vowel letters working together to spell OW in count. So it traveled through French and gave us that one like computing. But encounter was based off of a different Latin form that also traveled through French completely different roots that ended with very similar looking forms in English, different meanings. We need to examine them separately. They would not go into the same matrix. You would not put counting, like I am counting the fingers on my hand on the same matrix with encounter because they are coming from different places, different roots, not related. So if we look at Adam online and we look at encounter, we can see the noun and verb both came in around 1300 to meet as an adversary, the meeting of adversaries through Old French. Prior to that, it was Latin and we have the Latin prefix IN became the French one EN that we now retained in English and then in Latin, it was contra, C-O-N-T-R-A, just like contraband. Um, again, you get that against. That relative, that deeper relative, can also help us understand the meaning of this form, but it cannot be broken down farther into just the C-O-U-N-T. It really ends with counter, like countering something, going against something. So... From that, we can build all sorts of words like counteract, encounter, encountering, counterbalance, counterproductive, counterfeit. There's lots of places we can go in looking at it, but it is different than I am counting my money. Um, I counted on you coming to see me. So this is a really great example of what real spelling used to refer to as wissy-wiggery, what you see is what you get, where we really can't assume that because we see something that it is that thing. This goes back to my previous video, last week's video of warning of overgeneralization. Like just because we see count in there doesn't mean it's going to be related. Just because the er suffix is on there doesn't mean it's going to be an adjective form that little trap we can sometimes fall into that we all fall into where we assume there's a base somewhere just because the letters are similar and we assume they're related. We've all done this. I will probably continue to do this the rest of my life and then, oh yeah, I need to double check and find out, oh, I was wrong. They aren't related. That will continue happening. Better to check out on the front end and confirm your hypothesis. I hope this contrast of looking at the etymology of both of the words helps you see the importance of peeking in on that before diving into you know, making a matrix or assuming that words are related. 
Uh, this is very, very common for words that have the same spelling for people to merge them onto a matrix or assume they're related. And we have to keep in mind all the different meanings that words can have. Like we are inevitably going to miss definitions and relationships if we don't use our resources. I do not always use Edema Online in sessions. In fact, I quite rarely do. I only get 45 minutes with students, usually once a week. Um, I work with them one-on-one, -on -one, so I'm not in front of a classroom every day. Our time is very, very limited, and I need to make the most of that, and that means having kids do the most practice. Kids really need time to practice with the words, to build their own words, to spell, to write, to read them, to really help solidify those skills. So I wish you and your students beautiful word study moments. And as you encounter these words that have multiple meanings that may or may not be related, just check those resources. You won't regret it and it can add a lot of meaning and depth and richness to all of the study too. I hope you have a great week.